Just got done building a few set of headers at Stainless Works. They're gonna be for a giveaway, so pay attention to Stainless Works. Maybe you could be the lucky one to get them. While the words fearless and daring could easily describe any of the guys from Street Outlaws, if there's someone in the show who rates special attention, it's Jeff Lutz, a man apparently too normal to belong in the street race world, but who fits in like no one else. Although Jeff's undeniable top-notch driving abilities have gained him respect and recognition, both on the streets and through TV, we know it's hard to stay updated on what he and the other guys from the show are doing nowadays, their current projects. If you've indeed lost track of what Jeff Lutz has been doing recently, then fear no more. In this vid, we'll recount some of the most important things which have happened to him recently, the highlights of his career, and some bad news related to him. Just keep with us and enjoy the ride. Despite how attractive it sounds to spend your days out racing speed-obsessed guys for a living, the truth is that very few people are fearless enough to actually risk their life on the road just to win recognition and a street race title. Nonetheless, ability and a daring attitude sometimes isn't enough. Accidents and crashes happen all the time during drag races, including to some expert guys, such as Jeff Lutz. In May 2021, Jeff crashed his 1957 Chevy during the filming of Street Outlaws. While to date, it's unknown what caused the crash or even where exactly it happened. The many pics posted on social media show that his Mad Max twin turbo was left severely damaged in the accident. Fortunately, Jeff seemed to have survived the accident well even if he took some days off to recover from his injuries. Nonetheless, on his Instagram page, a pic of an almost entirely wrecked Chevy can be found with the caption, this car saved my life, making it apparent that what prevented him from being seriously injured were the car's safety mechanisms. While we're relieved that Jeff's well after such a terrible crash, the event awakened a bit of drama. Apparently, the accident was meant to be kept under wraps until some irresponsible person from the filming staff leaked the photos, which obviously generated a negative reaction from the show's production. And Jeff's fellow race driver Chuck Seitzinger, who expressed on Facebook his annoyance on the subject. In his words, whoever posted a pics did it without permission and to boost their numbers on social media. Nonetheless, while we're not sure if said person posted a pics out of naivete or with suspect intentions, their actions didn't go unnoticed, and judging by Chuck's post, they'll likely be banned from working with Street Outlaws again. Other than that, Mad Max was repaired quite quickly and was back on the road in no time. By mid-June 2021, Jeff posted pics of the modified 1957 Chevy on his social media, and it looked well, at least from the outside, though it's unknown how much had to be changed and repaired in its mechanism. Since the car was repaired and Street Outlaws filming apparently wrapped up, Jeff has been attending public events and race exhibitions with it. If that's not obvious enough, Jeff Lutz is still an active member of Street Outlaws and in 2021 also appeared in No Prep King's fourth season. Despite his notable expertise on the speedway, Jeff Lutz's life story is very different from his fellow Street Outlaws drivers. For starters, he didn't grow up surrounded by cars or develop a strong passion for driving from an early age. The first car he owned was gifted to him by his father when he was barely 14 years old. But contrary to what you might expect, he never got to drive that 1974 Nova. Apparently, although his father was a man who liked cars a lot, he was never into the upgrading and modification thing. Anyway, Jeff wasn't particularly affected by his father's lack of interest in mechanics or by his idea that no one could earn real money with race driving. Actually, at 18 years of age, Jeff was already a married man who was more preoccupied with establishing his own home with his wife Christine than in paying attention to a hobby, even less if it wasn't going to help him pay the bills. It wasn't until some years into his marriage with young kids and a stable profession that Jeff considered getting into race driving seriously. It actually happened thanks to his brother Rick, who asked him to take a look into a 1970s Camaro he had difficulty driving. However, as soon as Jeff took the driving seat, he felt just too well with it a feeling which only increased when he took it to the speedway for good measure. That was definitely what set the deal and convinced him to try race driving, an activity he had long been curious about thanks to having watched it on TV, but never dared to try it personally. In the late 1980s, Jeff bought a Chevrolet Camaro he started modifying a couple years later, and although he supposedly didn't have vast experience working in mechanics, his newfound passion for cars and determination for learning led him to become an expert mechanic and eventually establishing his own shop several years later. Jeff's determination to become a respected, fully-fledged race car driver paid off in 2014 
when he won his first drag race with a 1957 Bel Air, a feat he repeated two years later with a 1969 Camaro. Participating in recognized race events not only made Jeff's dream a reality, it also led him to connect to some expert drivers such as Sean Ellington and Justin Shearer, whom he met during his first week in drag race. Although at the time, Jeff was barely a rookie, he maintained that friendship with the Oklahoma guys and even started helping them out with the show. Sometime later, Ellington and Shearer invited him onto the show, and he couldn't say no. That's how he ended up debuting on TV during the 10th season of Street Outlaws, and later on its spin-off, No Prep Kings, generating a positive welcome by both the audience and its fellow race drivers. If there's something undeniable, it's that gaining a spot in the show, race driving all the time, and just fixing cars for a living makes Jeff visibly happy. As he describes it, the experience is a dream come true for him. Jeff continued appearing in the show for the following seasons and steadily climbed the legendary The List spots, eventually reaching the top five. The show has also opened new opportunities for Jeff, allowing him to showcase his mechanical abilities through his modified cars in exhibitions all around the US. We don't know exactly what happened to that 1954 Chevy Nova Jeff's father gifted him in his early years, but if there's something for sure, it's that the cars which followed saw better use. The Camaro Jeff bought in 1988 was the first car he modified, and considering Jeff was still learning it then, it's normal that it took some time for it to be ready for the road. Although that Camaro proved to be one of his best acquisitions, nowadays it's not looking exactly the same way it did initially. While Mad Max preserves its original black matte color, it's now equipped with a Rossler TH400 transmission and twin 88mm turbochargers. Later on, Jeff bought a black 1957 Chevy Bel Air, which gained huge fame for its sinister looking appearance back in the late 2000s when Jeff was still a rookie. Knowing it brings back many memories from his beginnings, it's not surprising that Jeff didn't want to get rid of it, even after buying a new race machine a couple years later. So nowadays, the beast is driven by his son Jeffrey. The new decade saw Jeff's race career speeding up by winning his first hot rod drag race in 2014. While some common guys would have thought that was enough, for Jeff, it meant he needed to improve even more. That's how in 2017, he ended up replacing the beast in favor of another 1957 Chevy Camaro, but painted yellow. However, the color wasn't the only thing different in this car. Maybe it was the 632 cubic inch motor and the twin turbos, but this then newly upgraded speed machine assured Jeff some victories and even a lot of stares thanks to his then recent debut on Street Outlaws. Although the second Mad Max was everything he wanted at the time, it was a car meant for the streets, but not for the strips. Thus, it's usually the one you would see him driving on Street Outlaws. Wanting and needing something different for the Speedway, in 2020, Jeff acquired an apparently factory-bodied 2006 Pontiac GTO. This might seem a big step away from his signature Pro Mods, but it's supposedly meant to improve his No Prep Kings performance. Becoming independent so early in life surely meant an advantage in many ways for Jeff. For one, he was financially stable enough to pursue his passion for cars when he came to it. And besides, it allowed him to gain experience in a variety of fields. It's unknown in how many work fields Jeff was involved, but we know he learned to well by working in a Connecticut body shop. In addition, he established a small brick and block business he had for several years until it went broke due to the market's lows. With the vast experience he already had at the time, he knew working with cars was a good new start for him. The choice fitted him well, and even before the closing of his first business, Jeff was slowly improving his mechanical skills on the side, while also establishing a home-based small body shop which took years to be ready. After being left with no job in the brick and block field, Jeff opened his car business while also accepting side jobs as a mechanic. Nowadays, Jeff's business is named Lutz Race Cars and is dedicated to building and upgrading cars for race purposes. The shop apparently has a two-year waiting list of customers, which means it's certainly successful. Reality Star Salaries is one of those things everyone wants to know about, but very few are privy to. This applies to Street Outlaws cast members who, despite how approachable they might look, are of course quite wary of revealing too much info about the financial inner workings of both the show and themselves. So of course, this secrecy surrounding their income unsurprisingly means even wider speculation about the show's cast salaries and net worth. In Jeff Lutz's case, sources estimate his net worth at over $3 million, accumulated from his various businesses, partnerships with car specialized brands, and from winning car races and championships, which is totally great in itself. Add his involvement with TV shows over the last decade, and the figure may be a considerable underestimate. If you've been loyally watching Street Outlaws and its spin-off series over the years, you surely know that the cast aren't strangers to crashes and road accidents. However, seeing that Jeff Lutz's crash is still recent, it's worth reminding you that it's something which has actually happened more than once in the latest seasons of the show. For starters, Chris Kamikaze Day was involved in a car crash in mid-2020, 
His legendary Elko, which used to belong to the late Tyler Pretty and then passed into Justin Shearer's hands, was totally destroyed by the accident. He eventually got a hold of a C5 Corvette for the next season, but had to sell some of the Elko pieces which weren't destroyed to be able to afford his new car. Not long after, James Love Street Beast was almost completely destroyed in a crash, though he fortunately wasn't seriously injured in it. While these happenings are unlucky to say the least, it doesn't mean Street Outlaw's race drivers aren't skilled enough to prevent them, but it's a good reminder of how dangerous their profession actually is, since they consistently push the speed racing limits, none more so than Jeff Lutz. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.